Hey, I wanted to do a basic tutorial describing how you can use iMovie to work on your digital storytelling assignment. I'm going to show you a couple of really basic functions, including adding some photos to your timeline, adding a transition between them, and adjusting the animation effects that iMovie adds automatically when you add a image, add an image. So let's uh, start off by opening a finder window and finding a couple of photos to add to the timeline here. Uh, I've got a couple photos of seagulls for whatever reason. I'm going to drag one of them over uh, and I just literally dragged it right into the timeline uh, window. And uh, so now we can see that if I put the playhead at the beginning and press play, we get a sort of gentle zoom out from that image. If I decide I don't want that animation, I can go up here to the cropping menu. I can select it and you can see Right here, this is the crop level for when you begin the shot. And then you can see it's zooming out gradually and it ends the shot like this. That was an arbitrary default that, that iMovie um, put on automatically. If I don't want that kind of animation, I can either choose to fit the photograph within the um, video window or I can do a crop to fill, which means it will actually crop the image a little bit uh, so that it will fill up the entire screen. So if I, if I choose to do that, and now I leave this menu and press play, you can see we can get four boring seconds of just that photo. Okay, let's make it less boring by bringing in a second photo. Uh, how about these seagulls? I will drag these over. Uh, and for the time being, I'm going to turn off the Ken Burns on that, and I'm going to crop to fill on this one as well. Uh, so I'll click out of this menu, and now we will get a slightly more interesting video of one photo, and then a second photo. If I don't want quite such an abrupt transition between the two, I can add a transition. Uh, so if I go over to the content library down here and select Transitions, It'll give me a whole bunch of choices. I don't recommend going too crazy with these. Some of them can get really distracting. Uh, the sort of classic that you'll probably recognize is what's called a cross dissolve. So let me just add a cross dissolve between these two. So I'm gonna drag this effect down in between my two photos. So you can see uh, it's, it's moving them over a little bit to add this cross dissolve. And um, now you can see as I drag my cursor over, that there's this sort of in-between period uh, where we see a little bit of both images. So now if I want to play that from earlier, I can press play, and you see one faded into the other. So uh, you can see that right now that cross dissolve is one second long. And uh, if I double click on it, I can uh, ask it to be longer. So let's have it be two seconds. Uh, that'll be a uh, much more gradual fade. And let's try seeing what that looks like. I press play, really slow dissolve, and then we're at the second one. Um, so maybe I like that, maybe I don't. Uh, for now, I'll leave that. Uh, but let's say we do want to gradually zoom in on uh, this pair of seagulls here. Uh, so let me click back onto this photo and go back into that uh, cropping menu. And let's click on Ken Burns. Again, you can see by default it zooms out uh, at the start and then comes in gradually. Let's do that, but let's also take it a little bit off center. So I'm going to click on End and I'm going to just drag it a little bit. So in addition to uh, the zoom, we're going to get a little bit of pan as well. So let me click out of that. And now what we should see, uh, if we go back to the beginning, is um, four seconds of, of boring single seagull, followed by our long two second cross dissolve. And that goes right into the Ken Burns, which is that gradual zoom toward the zoom and pan toward the right side of that photo. Obviously those were arbitrary sorts of decisions. What you really want to do is choose these effects based on what you are trying to achieve in using motion in your images. You also want to make sure you think about how overwhelming this might be. 
Uh, the Center for Digital Storytelling recommends that you don't use that Ken Burns animation more than every other photograph. So if you just used it, maybe your next photo should be a still photo. Um, I think the same kinds of rules apply to cross dissolves. Uh, you can sometimes do them and sometimes not. Um, again, I, I certainly wouldn't do some of these much more complicated transitions that they, that they recommend. I personally don't really like the effect of a still image cross dissolving into a moving image. So if this were me here, I would probably choose one or the other. If I really like the Ken Burns, um, maybe in this case, I'll decide to get rid of the cross dissolve, which I can do by selecting and deleting it. And then when I come back over here, uh, let's, let's readjust that Ken Burns. I don't like the pan, so I'm going to um, try to get that centered again. Um, but let's say I want to zoom in uh, further. So let me click on the end and um, let's make this box smaller so that it zooms in more. So um, this might give us the effect, I don't know, of sort of approaching these, uh, these birds and maybe that's something for whatever reason in your storytelling that you want to achieve. So let's uh, click out of this box and look one more time. Here we've got our still image and then we go there to a zoom. Okay, not super effective, I, I don't think. I'd probably uh, ease up on that. But again, it depends on what kind of story you're trying to tell. What's the purpose of this uh, animation at all? And so those are the, always the questions you want to be asking. Yes, there are all these technical capabilities, but how do they serve the story that I'm trying to tell? Okay, good luck with your projects. I hope this is helpful.